In this segment, we will look at uh, diode rectification of utility input uh, in case of single phase and three phase by rectifier circuits. So, just to characterize uh, various types of uh, input uh, converters, uh, one is of course uh, this diode rectifier that we are zeroing on in or on, I should say, and then we have. Uh, switch mode uh, converters that, that can be placed uh, at the front end and also <coughs> uh, thyristor converters uh, which, were, uh, which are also possible. So starting with uh, single phase diode uh, bridge rectifier, uh, in, in reality uh, we uh, in power electronics would have a large capacitor here to establish a DC voltage link and then across it uh, is another converter which is represented by this uh, equivalent resistance. Nobody is actually going to supply an actual resistor like this, so it's just representing uh, what uh, follows uh, to the right-hand side of this capacitor here. So to analyze this, uh, uh, let's redraw this circuit. First of all, we'll ignore this resistance uh, and inductance here make it ideal circuit at the input here and uh, we'll look at uh, this uh, four diode circuit between these two points on the DC side over here. So that is what is shown here and you can see here that we can redraw this circuit where the top group here consists of one and three diodes which are labeled at, on the left and similarly the bottom group through which the current returns uh, are labeled two and four as shown over here. So in single phase circuits, uh, these uh, uh, diode rectifiers may be used at uh, one or two kilowatt power level. Uh, beyond that, generally uh, there is uh, <coughs> there's a limit on how much uh, power uh, is supplied through the outlets of single phase circuits. And, uh, and here we'll see that the current that is drawn is uh, highly uh, uh, distorted. But before we get into that, uh, let's Im imagine that uh, between, uh, at the output, uh, the DC side, we have a resistor connected over here. Again, nobody is uh, going to actually put that resistor and supply it like this, but uh, let's say somehow we have that resistor. So what uh, would be the waveforms in this circuit? You can clearly see that if this uh, input voltage here is sinusoidal, then uh, during the positive uh, half cycle of this input voltage, diode one here and diode uh, two would conduct. So one and two would conduct here and uh, this current here would uh, have the same waveform as this uh, incoming voltage and so would be this I sub S over here. And uh, in the negative half cycle, three and four would conduct and uh, of course on the, the DC side we'll have this current waveform but uh, on the AC side this IS would be the negative of this so it, it will be like this over here, like this here. So we get uh, you know a sinusoidal voltage is coming in and uh, it'll uh, this circuit then assuming these diodes to be ideal without any voltage drop uh, this uh, the current drawn this IS would also be sinusoidal as shown here. Okay, but now let's say that we put a highly inductive load on the DC side. So this L is very large. So the current that the IDR that flows this current here has this rectangular waveform here. Okay, uh, so IDR actually no I'm sorry IDR has uh, would be a DC current here. If I were to plot this current here, this current over here, you know, if you assume that this inductance is very large, <coughs> it it will look, uh, ignoring any ripple in it, uh, pretty constant DC. But uh, uh, once again, uh, during the positive half cycle of this input voltage, diodes one and two would conduct, and uh, this IS would be equal to IDR, so it'll be here, and then. Uh, during the negative half cycle of E sub S, this diodes three and four would conduct, 
and 1 and 2 would get reverse biased and this current Is would be equal to minus IDR. So, it will be like this here. So, the voltage, uh, the current waveform would be rectangular as shown here by this red curve assuming that this is a highly inductive load on the DC side here. But in reality, what we have is a very large capacitor here, okay, at the output uh, of this uh, rectifier circuit on the DC side and here is this equivalent resistance here. <coughs> now, you know, it can be analyzed uh, uh, theoretically, but uh, it's really not necessary. Uh, I think the main thing is to understand how the circuit behaves and then go ahead and, and simulate that using PSPICE with uh, all the non-idealities included. So, here is the input waveform Vs, we assume it to be sinusoidal and uh, you can see here that uh, and we will include the, the internal impedance of this uh, voltage source <coughs> that uh, the current that is drawn, this current is in terms of these uh, pulses here like this here, uh, okay, like this over here. So, uh, you know, we should really uh, not try to analyze this uh, analytically uh, and get the expressions rather uh, go to piece, uh, program like PSPICE. So, what we see here is that, uh, uh, you know, when we uh, model this and simulate it, we see that uh, this current IS that is drawn, uh, it is uh, more peaky when you have a low value of uh, inductance on the AC side as compared to when you have higher value of inductance over here. So, the base of this uh, current drawn becomes wider, uh, higher the inductance on the input side here. And uh, so, we can go, you know, this shows the, the PSPICE uh, simulation circuit and uh, the waveforms for three different values of uh, input uh, AC side inductance and uh, higher the inductance, uh, lower the peak of the current. So, you can see this, this peak is going down here and uh, the base is becoming wider. <coughs> and uh, this also has implications on uh, what happens on the output, uh, uh, DC output side here. So, uh, let us uh, move on to three phase uh, diode bridge rectifiers and uh, you know, uh, generally we, we can draw it like this and uh, these uh, diodes are carefully numbered uh, because that is the sequence in which they, they will conduct given ABC sequence here, but uh, they can be redrawn uh, as shown to the right here and uh, <coughs> you know, 5, 1, 3 and 5, they make up the top group and uh, 2, 4 and 6 they make up the bottom group. So, the current would flow through one of the diodes in the top group and then will return through one of the diodes in the, the bottom group here. So, that is the nature of these three phase circuits. And uh, so, here are the three voltages coming in shown sinusoidal over here and uh, uh, then uh, uh, our role here is to say, is to show uh, what the the, the waveform, the voltage on the DC side would look like and what would be the, the three phase currents drawn here, okay. <coughs> so, what we notice here is that uh, the, the point P, which is uh, the top of the DC side voltage, that will follow whatever voltage uh, at any given instant is uh, most positive. So, that will follow this curve over here, okay. The point P would be like this as shown here and uh, uh, the, the, the negative point uh, at the output DC voltage Vn would follow this uh, most negative uh, phase in this manner over here. So, the DC voltage Vd is uh, the difference of this voltage at this point P and the voltage at point N here. So, 
So the difference of these two red waveforms that I have drawn, uh, you can see here plotted here. And uh, so what we see here is uh, every 60 degrees is really phase to phase voltage. Uh, what those phases are, uh, they change by every 60 degrees. So the in the middle of this uh, 60 degree interval shown here uh, is the, the peak value which is the uh, the peak of the line to line voltage. So if VLL is the RMS value, it will be square root of two times VLL, but uh, the waveform is repeating uh, by 60 degrees. So this is called a six pulse operation. And here we are assuming that uh, the current is flowing continuously on the DC side and better yet, if you assume for drawing purposes that uh, this uh, current on the DC side is, uh, you know, DC over here uh, because of the large uh, inductance uh, in the load on the DC side, then what we get uh, are currents on the AC side which have these uh, rectangular waveforms and uh, we can see that more clearly in, in this slide over here. Uh, first we see uh, in a more expanded form what uh, the voltage here would look like this V sub D, and I'm assuming here is that uh, there's a current, which is a DC current flowing here on the output side. Uh, and uh, then in this slide, we see, once again, assuming that this is a DC current over here, like this, uh, what uh, the waveform of currents would be on the AC side, IA, IB, and IC. So you can see that uh, uh, whenever the, the phase A voltage is uh, most positive. Uh, diode 1 is conducting here, and uh, uh, this IA is equal to the DC current here. So you, you get this waveform over here, and similarly, uh, whenever the voltage for phase A is most negative, which is over here, uh, diode 4 is conducting, and uh, in this case, uh, this IA is equal to this minus value of the DC current here. So you get this waveform here. But uh, uh, in other intervals, this current doesn't flow for IA. So this current IA uh, flows for 120 degree duration, which is from here to here uh, in a positive manner. Uh, it flows from here to here when diode 4 is conducting in a negative manner shown here. And uh, here and here, this current is zero. It doesn't flow. And similarly, you can see what happens to uh, this current IB and IC because uh, the corresponding diodes to these two phases would conduct and uh, the waveforms would be identical to IA, just shifted by 120 degrees for IB and shifted by 240 degrees for IC compared to IA waveform here. <coughs> so we can uh, once again go to p -spice and model these things with all the parasitics that we want. And uh, that is uh, shown in the circuit here. This is just to satisfy the P-spice requirement here, some very high resistance, as you can see here. It doesn't alter the circuit. And the waveforms are shown here for a certain value of uh, input uh, AC side inductance here. So this is the, the voltage across the output uh, uh, of the rectifier bridge across the capacitor. And uh, this is the incoming voltage V sub S. This green waveform is the current drawn in uh, one of the phases. So I, I should be careful here. This is for phase A, let's say, VA, and this is IA here. And the same thing can be drawn for VB and IB and so on, right? And uh, here it's shown what happens if you make this input side inductance uh, small. You get this waveform here, where in between every half cycle you have zero interval over here. No current flows here are here. Whereas uh, if you, this input side inductance is large, then of course uh, this current would keep on flowing as shown here, every half cycle here. So this brings us to the end of this segment. Uh, where we have seen how single-phase rectifiers work and how three-phase rectifiers work.